Did you start? Go ahead and start. All right, welcome everybody to our little Bible study on Galatians chapter 2. And today I have a lump of uh, dough. <laughs> yeah, a lump of clay um, or play dough. So I want to start with a word of prayer. Uh, please join me in praying. Dear Holy Father God, in Jesus' name we come before you and we're thankful that we are accepted in your beloved Son. And we thank you for your perfect word in the King James Bible. We pray, Lord, that you would give us all enlightenment and understanding as we look into your word in Galatians chapter 2 today, and that you would bless everyone who hears this message, and that you would help make your word clear to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's um, take a look at this chapter 2. So... Galatians chapter 2, Paul communicates his gospel at the Jerusalem Council. Um, chapters 1 through 10, I mean verses 1 through 10, is Paul's gospel was approved by the apostles in Jerusalem. Verses 11 through 21, the truth of Paul's gospel was defended before Peter. In time past, God made Israel a nation of honor. Can someone read Deuteronomy 7, 6? And then, um, so during prophecy, okay, go ahead, Marie. For, though, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the nation of Israel was chosen by God the Father to be a special people unto himself above all nations on the wor of the world. And so we're, that was in time past, during prophecy. So um, God was not unrighteous to temporarily make the nation a vessel of dishonor. Patty, can you read Romans 9, 14 and 21 of the same lump? So God took the lump and he made that same lump during uh, the mystery a vessel of dishonor. Go ahead, Patty, 9, 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Okay, and then 21. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Yes, so God can choose to make the nation a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor, which he did. But now, um, it's about, no, in the ages to come, God will make the nation a vessel of honor again. But now we are living during the nation of Israel's spiritual blindness. Romans 11, 25. Um, Maureen, oh, okay, Patty, you, you go ahead. You're there. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So, when the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, which is going to happen when God raptures the church, then um, he will make the nation a vessel of honor again. So, um, Maureen, can you... Well, we're going to cover that later. Okay. So, during this time that we're living in, the but now period, there's no middle wall of partition. And we're going to go over the middle wall of partition today. So um, in Acts 9, Jesus appeared to Paul, which began the mystery. And then when the Lord Jesus appears again to the body of Christ, it catches up into the air that, um, and take us <clears throat> into heaven. That will be uh, his other appearing. And that will end the mystery, then he'll start prophecy again. 
So um, the Bible is laid out, prophecy, mystery, prophecy. And it follows the divine order of the 66 books of the Bible. And we're going to go over that in just a minute. But right now, let's do our review sentence from last week, Galatians chapter 1. So, um, Paul marvels that they are so soon removed from his gospel. That um, sort of summarizes chapter 1. Okay, so I don't know if you can see um, these uh, little cards here. So notice this blue line up here and this blue line down here. So the nation of Israel was the circumcision and God made a distinction in time past to make them a vessel of honor. And so the nation of Israel was a vessel of honor. After the nation fell... Then they fell down to the same level as um, all other people. And so God made them a vessel of dishonor. After our rapture, God will again make of the remnant. See, he's going to take a little bit of this dough, and he's going to, which is the remnant, and he's going to make that remnant the nation of Israel. And so he will make the nation of Israel out of that remnant, and he'll make the nation of Israel um, a nation of honor again. So that's kind of that. And so let's go over the books of the Bible. Okay? So we have here Genesis to Malachi, and then Matthew to John. Then Acts is a transition book. Then we have Romans to Philemon, which has to do with the mystery. And then um, Hebrews to Revelation, which is prophecy again. So let's get going with our study for today. Um, let me make sure I have my glasses. And we'll come on over here. Okay. Let's turn to, um, oh, Galatians chapter 2. Oh, I forgot one thing, though. Oh, over here. Everyone, um, please go to Ephesians chapter 2. I want to show you um, these verses. So, in Ephesians chapter 2, we have the fact that in Ephesians 2 through 2, 11 and 12, that's where it says that we are now... I uh, mean, in time past, the Gentiles had no hope, okay? I'll just go over these real quick. But now is the time that it says, but now we who sometimes were far off have been not made nigh to God, okay? So that's in the Ephesians 2.13. Then in Ephesians 2.7, it, it says that in the ages to come, God is going to, you know, show us all, all graciousness when we are, you know, up in heaven. So, Ephesians chapter 2 talks a lot about the, you know, the, it gives you a clear time period of time past, but now, and ages to come. Okay, so let's get going. Okay. Maureen, can you read uh, verse 1? Two, one. I mean, Galatians chapter 2, verse 1. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. Okay. So Paul had said that he went to see Peter for 15 days at one time when he went to, to Jerusalem. Now, in um, God's Secret, I mean... Not God's Secret. God's Secret is the book that helps you to understand right division. But in Romans chapter 1, well, before that, in the introduction part of Romans, we have a really outstanding um, timeline made by Sam Gerhardt of the 
of Paul's ministry. And it shows us clearly in this timeline um, that Paul actually went up to Jerusalem five different times during after he was saved. And um, he mentions the first one in chapter 1, then he skips the second one when he went up to Jerusalem while Peter was in jail, when everyone prayed and, and you know, the angel came and, and uh, took his shackles off and led him out of the jail mm. during the Days of Unleavened Bread. So he sk Paul skips that visit. And then now he's talking about his actual third visit to Jerusalem after his conversion. So Paul went up to Jerusalem council 14 years after the 15-day visit with Peter, which is 17 since year since his conversion because you you know you you take the three years and you add the 14 years and you get 17 years so i believe christ died AD 33 or 34 and that paul was saved one year later shortly after the stoning of stephen in ad 35. god gave israel a one-year extension of mercy to receive the pro prophesied kingdom after Christ died on the cross and was buried and rose again. He gave, was here for 40 days and he gave, after he ascended, he gave Israel one year extension of mercy. And the most important event of all time is the cross, but what, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And Paul explains that and he knows how important that event was. So, um, Christ had pleaded on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what to do, what they do. And he also had pleaded with them earlier, with the Father earlier, to give them another chance in Luke 13, 6 through 9. The Father did forgive them. And he did give them that one year of extension of mercy. And... Um, I just want to say that all of these books the, um, are available on, available on Amazon, uh, including 1 Corinthians, a commentary, and now uh, 2 Corinthians, a commentary, has also come out. Oh. Yes? I wanted to um, tell you Sam Gerhardt is watching. Oh, so great. Thank him. Yeah, thank you, Sam Gerhardt, for letting me have your wonderful timeline. That's one of the reasons why... Romans is such an expensive book because it's color, because I wanted that chart of yours to be in color. And um, we are also using Lori Verstegen's Through the Book of Books for our handouts, and we'll do some homework in it today and um, on page 195, and that's also available on Amazon. Um, okay, so... Um, Let's see. So if we add 17 to 30, AD 35, um, we get um, 52. So in other words, it was then AD 52 when Paul went up to the Jerusalem Council. It's interesting to note that the apostles expected Christ's second coming before that. Let's turn to um, 2 Peter 3, 4. Patty, you want to read that? 2 Peter 3, 4. So, um, all right. well, I, I got it. All right, go ahead, Patty. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Okay, so the, if we close the chart and we don't have the yellow, mm -hmm. they were in this little time period here before the tribulation. And we don't know exactly how long that little time period is before Antichrist signs the seven-year covenant with Israel. But the, we know that it's probably not going to be a whole 17 years because the um, apostles in Jerusalem were, you know, kind of expecting that event to happen a long time before. That's why they had sold everything they had. Um that's why they sold all their property. Because they expected Jacob's trouble and the tribulation 
and it couldn't, you know, buy or sell because they couldn't, they wouldn't be able to, they wouldn't want to take the mark of the beast, right? We'll talk a little bit more about that later. So, um, for 17 years, Paul had had very little contact with the 12 apostles. Patty, verse 2, Galatians 2, 2. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which are of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. So Paul went to Jerusalem by direct revelation from Christ. See how it says by revelation? Mm -hmm. And notice how it says that gospel. Mm -hmm. He was, um, I also want to mention that he was not asked to come there by the Jerusalem apostles. Paul's mission from Christ was to successfully share some information with the leaders in Jerusalem that they didn't know. He met privately with them so that the false brethren could not argue against him. Paul had been teaching that faith in Christ alone was necessary for salvation. In other words, that work such as physical circumcision was not necessary for salvation. And here's the kicker. The kicker is that Galatian saints were circum getting circumcised. Mm -hmm. The Galatian saints were getting circumcised. And we're going to see, see that a little bit later. Um, he uh, wants those apostles to understand that the gospel, the gospel that Christ gave him Paul communicated. See how it says there that he communicated mm -hmm. and communicated. Mm -hmm. What does communication mean? Communication means that I successfully transfer some information that I know to someone else so they understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I want you to circle that word communicated in your Bibles and then go over to verse 7. So that was in verse 2. And circle that word saw, which is um, the fifth word in your Bibles. Verse 7, circle saw. And then verse 9, circle the word perceived. Um, that's in verse 9 in the first sentence. So, um, he, Paul is going to be successful in communicating because they're going to, they saw and they perceived, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, where was I? Um, so, uh, that means he made the leaders in Jerusalem understand Christ's new message to the Gentiles through him. He went to catch them up on what God was doing now, namely his great dispensational shift. The great dispensational shift. That God had inserted the mystery between... Prophecy. He has a new apostle, and Christ has a new ministry from heaven through him. Uh, what was the information that Paul shared? Christ from heaven had a new and different message, which he, uh, Paul called that gospel, which I, Paul, preach among the Gentiles. Many in Jerusalem, as Patty said, were asking, where is the promise of his coming? And I believe that the, the apostles in Jerusalem were going, you know, he's supposed to have been here. His second coming should have been here. The tribulation, his wrath also goes along with, with that second coming. That should have happened. You know, what's going on? So they were a little bit wondering why, what was delaying Jesus Christ from coming. Um, verse 3, Maureen. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. So Paul brought along a young uncircumcised Greek preacher, Titus, as Exhibit A. And he was not forced to be circumcised. If the apostles in Jerusalem did not compel Titus to be circumcised, that meant that Gentiles in the new dispensations do not need to be circumcised. Verse 4, Patty. 
and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us unto bondage. Into so, bondage. Mm -hmm. so false brethren had come in privately to secretly spy out their liberty that they had in Christ. They had most likely seen Titus was not circumcised in the public bath houses. Our liberty in Christ is not having to do the works of the law, such as circumcision. The body of Christ believers are blessed up front, as it says in Ephesians 1, 3, that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. And in verse 6, it says that we are accepted in the blood. And in Colossians 2, 10, it says that we are complete in Him. So we have everything up front. We don't need to do anything more. Our position is sealed. Um, in fact, to do something more is to do without faith and to, you know, insult God. The law says to do and be blessed. Grace says you are blessed, now do. The law functions by fear of punishment and the if-then principle, as we're going to see in Exodus 9, 5, and 6. Let's go over there. Exodus 9, 5, and 6. We're looking now at the if-then principle. I mean, Exodus 19, 5, and 6. Let's turn there. Okay, I'll read those. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed. See how that if is there? <laughs> and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So God told Moses that. So he wants them to keep his commandments. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Love is the biggest motivator in grace as we live by faith. As it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that we walk by faith. And in 2 Corinthians 5, 14, that, you know, the love of Christ constrains us now. So, under the law, proselytes to Judaism did not get circumcised when they converted to Jude. No, did get circumcised. I'm sorry. <laughs> proselytes, under the law, did get circumcised when they converted to Judaism. Okay? And let's see that. It's very interesting. So, proselytes believe that Israel's God... Okay, okay, so let's see. Under the law, proselytes to Judaism did get circumcised when they converted to Judaism. Turn um, to Genesis 17. Maureen, can you read um, 17, 10 through 14? And then Patty, mm -hmm. turn to Esther 8, 17. 8, 17. Um, whenever you're ready, Maureen, um, seven, Genesis 17, 10 through 14. Let me get there. Let me get there one second. Okay, go for it. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not thy seed. Mm -hmm. Go all the way to 14. You can already see that, that a bunch of, you know, a, a lot of people are getting circumcised, not just Jews. Go ahead. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. 
and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man-child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. So God is very clear. If you want to have eternal life, get circumcised. Okay? Um, let's turn now to Esther 8.17. So proselytes believe that Israel's God was the true God and demonstrated their faith by doing the same things as the Jews. That's how the proselytes did it. So, Patty, let me turn to Esther myself here. Um, Esther 8.17. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm going to find it. <laughs> Just bear with me. After Nehemiah is Esther. Okay. Go ahead, Patty. Okay. And in every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. Okay, so the... Many people converted to Judaism, many Gentiles. So just want to show you, you know, a, an incident of conversion when um, Esther, in Esther's, uh, in the book of Esther. So um, we re read here in this book that many Gentiles became Jews, but in this new dispensation, it is a sign of unbelief to get circumcised because that it is saying that Christ, what Christ did was not enough. Go ahead, Maureen, with verse 5, 2, 5. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Paul and his companions stood their ground against the false brethren. Not for an hour did they agree that circumcision was necessary for salvation or sanctification. Works of the law do not save a person, nor make a person righteous, as we know in Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. In fact, Paul proved in Romans 7 that our sinful flesh is energized by trying to keep the law. The law shows us how exceedingly sinful we are, which leads to self-condemnation and despair. Paul wants their glorious liberty to continue there in Galatia. That glorious liberty is that Christ has done everything to save us, and we cannot add to that. Verse 6, Patty. But of these who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were, it make the, maketh no matter to me, God accepted, accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. Paul says that the men of reputation, James, Peter, and John, because um, we're going to see that, you know, in verse 9 it says James, Cephas, and John. Cephas is Peter added nothing to the information Paul shared with them. God is not impressed with humans. He's impressed by what his son has done. Men do not impress Paul either. Paul knew everyone inherited the sin nature and that only Christ was perfect. Verse 7, Marie. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. So on the contrary, Paul added to their knowledge. That's why he says contrary-wise. Because he told them about the mystery. How many gospels are in this verse? Well, let's see. The gospel of the uncircumcision and the gospel of the circumcision. So, you know, before you answer that, you might want to answer this question, is circumcision and uncircumcision two different things? 
Your answer should be yes. They are different. And there are two different Gospels in verse 7. One committed to Paul and one to Peter. The Gospel of the uncircumcision is what Paul preached to the Gentiles. Christ crucified for their sins and risen again. No works of circum or circumcision required. Okay, that's why it's called the uncircumcision. Um, you know, because circumcision is not required. The gospel of the circumcision is what Peter preached to Israel on Pentecost. He said, repent, which means change your not mind that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus, uh, um, you know, Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah. And circumcision is required. You remember how, how God said in Genesis 17 that you're going to be cut off unless you're, you know, and this is a statute forever. Mm -hmm. um, so he says, repent, be baptized, and you will receive remissions for sins and the Holy Ghost to empower you to be part of his royal priesthood in the earthly kingdom. Let's turn to Acts 2.38. And then, Patty, um, why, don't, why don't you read um, that, Patty? Okay. And then, Maureen, why don't you read Acts 4, 10 through 12? And then I'll read 1 Peter 2, 6 through 10. So, Acts 10, 2, 38, Patty. Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Good. Um, Maureen 4, 10 through 12. Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Okay, so um, the stone is the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's the smiting stone mentioned in Daniel. So... Um, there is no, none other name given among heaven by which we can be saved. So we have to remember that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Redeemer for two groups of people. Those people that would live in the earthly kingdom and those people who would live in the heavenly places. So he also, um, Peter here in this section, he says that, you know, it was bad news that they crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul says it was good news for the body of Christ. So mm -hmm. that's there's another difference. Mm -hmm. um, now let's turn to First Peter two um, six through ten. Okay. Wherefore. Um, okay, I'm actually going to start in 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of a corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a, ro are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which 
Okay, in time past were not a people, but are now a people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but have now obtained mercy. So the little flock has obtained mercy because they have put faith in that chief cornerstone, the Lord Jesus Christ. And they become the royal priesthood to rule with Jesus Christ in the earthly kingdom and evangelize the, the uh, whole world. Okay, so um, notice how uh, Peter talks about a house. And so the, this, is, this is showing that the house is actually a duplex. And this um, is a drawing by Paul Sadler that's in God's Secret on page 71. The whole, this side is prophecy, and the other side of the duplex is mystery. That whole other half of the house of God was not made known, and we didn't know that the house of God was a duplex until Paul. Um, Paul had the blueprints for that. So, um, let's see. Um, God gave Abraham and his descendants the covenants and the token of circumcision. Notice that the leaders at Jerusalem saw the truth of God's dispensational change. God had let Peter know that he had decided to change his dealings with mankind and the dietary laws in Acts 10, 15, 28, 10, and 11, 8, and 9. Let's turn there. Acts 10, 15. Um, Patty, is it your turn to read? Uh, yeah. Uh, I couldn't read. Oh, or is it yours, Maureen? Acts 10, 15, and 28. Then, Patty, you can read uh, 11, 8, and 9. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath plans, that call not thou common. Mm -hmm. And then verse 28. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Good. And then Patty 11.8. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. And then nine. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. Okay, when God does something twice, um, he establishes it. And when he does something three times, it's very important. And that sheet came down three times to Peter. Uh, the sheet was full of clean and unclean animals. And, you know... It descended three times. Peter told Cornelius, Ye know how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. That was in 1028. So, um, their Jews had had the dietary laws and then all of a sudden, in Acts 10, God shows Peter that he's not dealing with mankind using those dietary laws anymore. Mm -hmm. So Peter remembered this at the Jerusalem Council, saying that there is no difference between Jews and Gentiles, and that both are saved by faith. Turn to Acts 15, 7 through 11. Because Acts 15 goes along with Galatians 2, because they're both about the Jerusalem Council. So, turn to Acts 15, 7 through 11. And I'll read those. <clears throat> and when there had been much disputing at the council of Ju at Jerusalem... Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the, of the gospel and believe. And God, which 
knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, because they spoke in tongues. So Peter knew they had the Holy Ghost. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So no one was able to keep the law. Um, the Jews couldn't keep it. The Gentiles couldn't keep it. And so um, Peter at the Jerusalem Council said, you know, don't force the Gentiles to keep the, the, the law of, of, you know, in the commandments of having being circumcised. So God made the nation a vessel of honor during prophecy, and he was not unrighteous to, make, to temporarily make that nation of the same lump a vessel of dishonor during mystery. God will make that nation an, um, a vessel of honor again after the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And um, that's in, um, once he's finished with the mystery, Romans 11, 25, 26. During the dispensation of grace, the nation of Israel is in apostasy and do not recognize Jesus of Nazareth as their king. You can go and ask Netanyahu, you know, should Jesus of Nazareth be sitting as king right here, right now? And he'll say, I'm the prime minister. No. <laughs> so they are in apostasy right now. Uh, Paul and Barnabas also declare that the miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them, as you see in Acts 15, 12. It says, Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. So the fact that Paul and Barnabas had done miracles and wonders was another sign to Israel that God was now working through Paul. Okay. So we know that the Jews require a sign because it says so in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, 1, 22. No, not 15. 1 Corinthians 1, 22. The Jews require a sign. At the end of the Jerusalem Council, which took place in Acts 15, 1 through 35, it was determined four things, okay? One, God is visiting Gentiles to take out for him a people for his name. That's in 15.14. And two, Gentiles are not under the law and do not need to be circumcised. That's in 15.1 and 24. We're going to look at these in a minute. So oh. turn to Acts 15. Okay. Paul was the apostle of the Gentiles, as we're going to see in Galatians 2.9. And the prophetic program will resume after God is done forming uh, that Gentile group as it says in Acts 15, 16, and we also saw in Romans 11, 25, and 26. Well, we didn't look at 11, 26, but it says, 11, 26 says, all Israel should be saved, Romans 11, 26. So, Maureen, why don't you read what James said at the, as the conclusion of in 15, Acts 15, 14 through 16. Well, you can start at 13. Okay. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. So Simeon there is Peter. Go ahead. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. That the residue of men might see... Oh, no, it's 16. You did it. Oh, I yeah. Did. Okay, so, um, after God has finished calling out a people, then the prophets in prophecy say, you know, that he's going to rebuild... David's um, kingdom, and um, Christ is going to be of the seed of David to sit on the throne. 
So verse 8, Patty, um, Galatians 2, 8. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. So Christ, in his earthly ministry, gave Peter his authority, and the Holy Spirit allowed many to be saved by his preaching. Christ, in his ministry from heaven, gave Paul his authority, and the Holy Spirit saved many by his preaching. The Holy Spirit validated Paul's apostleship by having him repeat the signs Peter did during the Acts period. Paul water baptized converts just like Peter had. Peter spoke in tongues and so did Paul. Peter went to the Jews first and so did Paul. Peter healed the sick and raised Dorcas from the dead. Paul also healed the sick and raised Eutychus from the dead. Verse 9, Maureen. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. So James, Peter, and John seemed to be pillars in Jerusalem, but their authority did not impress Paul, nor was he subject to them. But when they perceived that God had delayed his coming, interrupted or paused prophecy, as we just read in Acts 15, 14 through 16, and had begun a new dispensation with a new apostle and a new message, then they gave their approval by shaking hands. Notice how it's mm -hmm. plural, hands. Mm -hmm. So they were all shaking hands on it. God gave the mystery of the dispensational grace to Paul. God did not make his hidden wisdom known before that. And his hidden wisdom is, let's start, turn to Ephesians 3, 2, 5, and 7. Let's go to Ephesians 3, 2, 5, and 7. So in Ephesians 2, I mean 3, 2, it says, If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. So it was given to me, Paul, to you, word, the Ephesians, or, you know, all believers. How that by re revelation, oh, no, verse 5 which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as is now revealed by unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So it was not made known in other ages. So it was not made known until Paul. So during Christ's earthly ministry, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was not made known, nor during the first part of Acts. Uh, verse 7, Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual power, uh, working of his power. So um, the power uh, in Paul was Christ. Because if it had been, if God had let the mystery be known, Satan would not have allowed Christ to be crucified. Turn to 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 8. <laughs> Um, and I'll read that too. Okay. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 8. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom. So, the mystery is hidden wisdom of God, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have uh, circumcised the Lord of glory. So, um, in, in Ephesians 6, 12, turn to Ephesians 6, 12, because we're going to see, you know, who are those uh, princes of this world? that didn't know this. It was actually, you know, Satan and the fallen angels. Ephesians 6.12, Patty, you want to read that? Sure. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
So that's um, wh who the princes of this world are. Those are, they are the, uh, you know, uh, principalities uh, and powers that um, the rulers of the darkness of this world uh, and the spiritual wickedness. So um, that's Satan and his cohorts. They would not have allowed Christ to be crucified if Satan um, had known that Christ wants to re reclaim the heaven as well as the earth, both, both realms. Satan lost both realms. The apostles in Jerusalem loosed themselves from carrying out the commission and concentrated on caring for the existing believing remnant in Jerusalem until they died out in the first century. Perhaps Peter had realized during Paul's 15-day visit that he would not lead the little flock into the kingdom, so he let James take over. Galatians 2, 6-9 is a great section of scripture to see the mystery, and so is Ephesians 3, 1 through 9, and Colossians 1, 24 through 27. Uh, Maureen, verse 10, to Tim. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. Paul was eager to remember the poor at Jerusalem, and he brought them financial contributions on several occasions. Peter was in prison during Paul's second visit to Jerusalem to deliver money with Barnabas. As it says in Acts 11.30, and uh, let's take a look at that. Acts 11.30. Uh, go to Acts 11.30. Okay. Which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So they had some money that they sent to Jerusalem by the hands of Barnabas and Saul from Antioch. Now go to 1225. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. So in in chapter 12 there was, you know, the Peter's um, imprisonment. Mm -hmm. under Herod. Mm -hmm. um, turn uh, to Romans 15, 25, and 26. Patty, go ahead and read that. Romans 15, 25, and 26. Mm -hmm. This is just showing that Peter, uh, I mean, Paul brought money to the poor at Jerusalem. And we know why they're poor, but we're going to look at that in a minute. Go ahead, Patty. 15, but, but now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints, for it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. So Paul may, so Paul, you know, went to the, um, you know, told the Romans that he's going to go in to Jerusalem and give them an offering of some money to those poor saints. Mm -hmm. Paul made a total of five visits to Jerusalem after his conversion. And I'm going to have a list of those five um, times on God's Secret Facebook page and these notes also. The believing remnant of Israel in Jerusalem were poor because they believed that the kingdom and therefore God's wrath, Jacob's trouble, the tribulation were at hand. So they would not be able to buy and sell since they would not take the market beast. Let's turn to Luke 12.33. Uh, Maureen, then, Al, uh, um, then Paul, Patty, you can do Acts 2.44. So Luke 12.33. And we're going to just look at why, why they're poor. Go ahead, Murray. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth nor corrupteth. Neither moth corrupteth. Okay, so he, uh, Christ had said, sell all, all you have, and they obeyed. Patty, Acts 2.44. And all that believed were together. 
and had all things common. Okay, so they shared everything. Now, Patty, can you read 432 also, Acts 432? Uh-huh. Then, Maureen, can you read uh, uh, Revelation 13, 18? Okay. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that not aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Okay, so they shared, they sold what they had and they shared it with everybody. Go ahead, um, Revelation thirteen eighteen. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Okay, which is six hundred and sixty six. Six six six. So they're not going to take that mark of the beast. Um, Patty, verse 11 to 11. Oh, um, oh, in Galatians. Galatians. Oh. We come oh. now to the second half of this chapter. Go ahead, Patty. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the, to the face. Because he was to be blamed. Go ahead, Patty. One more. For before that certain came, for before from, that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. So, but when Peter was come to Antioch, so after the Jerusalem Council, Paul went back to Antioch. Okay, and Peter came for a visit. I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. So mm. Paul is going to with, with rebuke Peter now. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. So he was eating with the Gentiles just like Paul. Mm. Okay. But when they were come, those people from James... He withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. So Peter was sitting and eating with the Gentiles just like Paul because he saw and perceived that the middle wall of partition was down. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, and was no longer up. And God had, made, had a middle wall of partition, as we said before, between Israel and all the other nations... Israel was above the nations because they had the circumcision and they also had the law. Those dietary laws, the Ten mm -hmm. Commandments, all of those laws also added to making Israel um, separate. Let's take a look at um, Deuteronomy 26.19, Maureen and Patty, Deuteronomy 28.13. So Deuteronomy 26.19... And Patty, you twenty-eight thirteen. Okay. Numbers Deuteronomy twenty-six nineteen. This day the Lord thy God hath commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt keep therefore keep and do them with all thine heart. And with all thy soul. Okay. Yeah, okay. It must it, not be. It, it was oh, it 26, to, 19? Okay, here it is. And to make thee high above all nations, which he hath made, in praise and in name and in honor, and that thou mayest be an holy people unto the Lord thy God, as he hath spoken. So God was going to make the nation of Israel... High above all nations. Patty 28, um, 13. 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and, not, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. So... Israel was going to be the head and not the tail if they keep the commandments that God gave them. Mm -hmm. uh, they had the token of circumcision, as we talked about in Genesis 17.10. Mm -hmm. 
And then the law was added by Moses to further the distinction by dietary and other laws. God had showed Peter in Acts 10 with the sheet full of clean and unclean animals let down from heaven three times that the Jewish dietary laws were no longer in effect because God had changed how he was doing things. In Acts 15, 7 through 11, Peter said that God decided that Peter should preach to the Gentiles, and he did to the household of Cornelius. God showed Peter that he had changed his dealings with mankind. God was not enforcing the dietary laws that separated Israel from the other nations now, so Peter should not call any man common or unclean, as he said in Acts 10.28. The Gentiles believed Peter's gospel and received the Holy Ghost. God did not put a difference between the Jews and the Gentiles. At the council, Peter said, Why should we demand the Gentiles to follow the law that we cannot follow? We believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. That was in Acts 15.11. All people, regardless of dispensation, are saved by God's grace through faith and not by works. As uh, Paul said in Romans 3.29-31. through 31. Let's turn there. Romans 3.29-31. through 31. Okay. So it says, um, Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not of, also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing that it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So uh, let's turn now to Romans 11.6. Since we're in Romans. Romans eleven six. Go ahead and read that, Patty. Mm -hmm. And then Maureen, you can read uh, Hebrews eleven six. And if by grace, then, then is it no more of works? Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace? Otherwise, work is no more work. Okay, so um, salvation is always by grace. It's God's grace that anyone should be saved and not completely, you know, blown to smithereens. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Maureen, 11, uh, Hebrews eleven six. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, so... It's a, uh, you can't please God without faith. You have to have faith. And we have faith in what, that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again. So, But the nation of Israel is required to have their faith accompanied by works, such as water baptism and circumcision. Remember we saw that? Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at Mark 16:16. 16, 16. Patty, why don't you read that? And then you can read James 2:24, um, Maureen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do these real quick. He that believeth real loud. He he that believeth and is baptized should be saved. Shall be shall saved. Shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Okay, so you know, believeth and is baptized. It's, you know, a work there. Go yes. ahead, Maureen. Ye see, then, how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Okay, so, you know, works was um, also a requirement uh, for the Jews. But God has said different things to different people uh, at different times. Noah believed God and built an ark. Abraham believed his descendants was God's nation and seed line. John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, and Peter preached, Repent and be baptized so that you can enter into the earthly kingdom. The kingdom on earth church, that's Peter and his group, had to believe that the name of the Messiah and King was Jesus of Nazareth. The body of Christ must believe the simple message that Christ died for our sins, 
was buried and rose again the third day, according to scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Gentiles are saved differently in mystery than they were in prophecy. In prophecy, Gentiles has to have to go through Israel to be saved. In mystery, Gentiles are saved by going and directly believing on Jesus Christ without going through Israel or the law. Um, Paul never said that the body of Christ would enter the earthly kingdom, but that we would live eternal in the heavens, as it says in 2 Corinthians 5.1. Um, Maureen, verse 13. 2.13. And, then. and the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Okay, dissimulation means hiding under false appearances, a false pretension, hypocrisy, to conceal the real, uh, their real opinions or purpose. Peter and the other Jews, and even Barnabas, saw the men of James come and decided to eat apart from the Gentiles at their own table. James probably had a very strong personality. James seems to have understood the dispensational change, but then he seems to have lost sight of that fact because in Acts 21, he had Paul do some very Jewish kind of things. Verse 14, Patty. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? So Peter and Paul, Paul is repeating to Peter what he had said during the council. Mm -hmm. So uh, when Paul saw that Peter and the others were not walking according to the truth, that God had, one, changed the dispensations, two, the middle wall of partition was down, the nation was not above at this time, but, but on the same level as all nations, that God was not putting a difference between the Jews and the Gentiles, and that, that's number three, and four, that God was no longer enforcing Israel's favored nation status. Then Paul rebuked Peter. Bas Paul basically said to Peter, God has showed you several times by your vision and by me that he has begun a new dispensation as evidenced by him not enforcing the dietary laws now because the nation of Israel fell, as it says in Romans 11, 11 through 13. Let's turn there. Romans 11, 11 through 13. Okay, I'll read that. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? This is, they is the nation of Israel. God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. So the salvation of the, gen the Gentiles have an opportunity for salvation, which is making the nation provoked to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. So right now their fall is making the Gentiles of the world rich. For I speak to you, Gentiles, insomuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. So that was Romans eleven thirteen. Paul magnified his office as the one apostle to the one body of Christ. So, um, where was I? Uh, okay. So do you think, this is what Peter, Paul is telling Peter. So do you think you will com be commended by God if you avoid eating pork chops? <laughs> or sit apart from the Gentiles? Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 8.8. 8. Patty, can you read that? 1 Corinthians 8.8. 8. Okay. I'll, I'll read it. Okay. But me commendeth us not to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. So right now in this dispensation of grace, God doesn't care if someone is eating certain things or not, or not eating at all. So, um, 
Because what matters is what Jesus Christ did on the cross. So are you going to make the Gentiles avoid the pepperoni on their pizzas? <laughs> if you say that the dietary laws are still in effect right now, when God says they are not, you are going against what God says he's doing now. That is not walking upright according to the truth. Please notice that Peter does not say that he is the one in authority. Paul mentions the middle wall of partitions in Ephesians 2.14. Let's turn there. Ephesians 2.14. Let's look at the middle wall of partition right now. Okay, I'll, I'll read this section, which is 2.11 uh, through 18. Ephesians 2.11 through 18. Wherefore, remember that ye, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. So that was the Gentiles' condition in times past. No hope. And without God. Now, verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So now, in the but now time, we have been made nigh by the Christ's blood. 14. For he is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So, the wall is down. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. He's making the one new man, the body of Christ, because he's not dealing with nations now, he's dealing with individuals. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached pre peace, preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them were, which were nigh. So he's now preaching peace to them that were afar off, and those that were nigh, you know, which is Israel. We were far off down here. We've always been down. Mm -hmm. The Gentiles, but now the, you know the the Jews are are at same level as us. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. So we have access at this time in the dispensation mm -hmm. of grace. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's see. Where am I? Uh, what what verse did we just read? Oh. Ephesians okay. 2. Okay, this does not mean that the twelve are in the body of Christ. I have repeatedly said that they will judge the nation of Israel in the earthly kingdom, as it says in Matthew 19.28. It is the individual Jews and Gentiles in the dispensation that form the one body. And we're going to see that in Galatians 3.28 in a little bit. Um, verse 15, Patty. 2.15. We're almost done. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. Can you read a little louder? Okay. All right, fine. That was good. Paul says that Peter and him are Jews by birth and are not sinners um, like the Gentiles. Verse 16, Maureen. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So we know that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but we are justified by our faith in the faith of Jesus, who fulfilled the Father's plan of redemption. The modern Bibles leave out the little word of and replace it with in, putting the emphasis of faith on the believer instead of on Jesus Christ. 
The King James Bible exalts the Lord Jesus Christ more than any other English Bible. Remember, Jesus is the Redeemer for both heaven and earth um, believers. No one knew that the household of God was a duplex before Paul. We have the same foundation, which is Christ, but one side is prophecy, you know, on that um, mm -hmm. duplex, Christ mm -hmm. ministry on earth, and the other side is mystery, Christ ministry from heaven. Believers in both groups put their faith in Christ's faith. It cost God a lot to redeem us by his blood. In God's secret, there is an excellent picture that I showed you about Paul Sadler. Uh, with Paul Sadler, let's take a look at that again. By Paul Sadler, the duplex. Oh. A duplex right there. Okay. The, the house of God is a duplex, okay. right? Okay. Duplex. On page 71. Duplex. No one can be justified by the works of the law, as it said in Romans 3, 19 and 20. Let's go there real quick. Mm -hmm. Romans 3, 19 and 20. Do you want to read that, Patty? Sure. Read, read, read it real loud. Mm -hmm. oh. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. One more. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Okay, so no one is justified by the law. When Paul says, but now, that often indicates the great dispensational shift. Here, are, So then I give a, uh, some other times that he says, but now. In Romans 3.21. Let's uh, read that. Patty, are you there in uh -huh. Romans 3? Uh-huh. Read Romans 3.21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Okay, so, um, but now, reading in this dispensation, um, the righteousness of the law is manifested because of what Jesus Christ has done. Galatians 4.6, Maureen. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe that's not what, which one I wanted. Try Galatians, uh, I mean, Colossians 1.26. Colossians 1.26 instead. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages... And from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. That's it. That's it. We got <laughs> but now in there. Uh, it was hid from ages and generations. It wasn't made known until it was made known in Acts 9 to Paul. So we're living in the parentheses. The Christ appearing to Paul on the road to Damascus, uh, which is the beginning of the mystery to Christ uh, appearing again to take the body of Christ to heaven and the rapture. So, verse 17, Patty? Uh, that's it. Go Galatians 2.17. 2, 17. Uh, but if while we seek to, uh, to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. If therefore Christ... Is then, therefore... Oh, is therefore Christ the minister of sin... God forbid. So if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we sin by not upholding the truth of what God says, is Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. The problem is with us. And the problem was with Peter. Verse 18, pa uh, Maureen. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Notice that Paul use, uh, uses the I statements. If I think I can be justified by keeping the law, I make myself a transgressor. If my actions say that the middle wall of partition is still up, that his dietary laws are still in effect, and that his nations are separate and favored above other people in the present dispensation, then I deny the truth that God's, of what God says he's doing now. That is sinful. So that's what... Um, Paul is saying to Peter, you know, you're building that wall of, of separation by separating yourself from eating with these Gentiles. 
and not eating their food and sitting off. You know, you're building that wall, middle of water petition when God said it was down. Okay? Verse 19, Patty. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. Christ redeemed us through the sacrificial system. He also kept the law perfectly. He never sinned in thought, word, or deed. We identified with his death on the cross uh, when we were saved. We identify with Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. Our sin nature was crucified with Christ when we believed the old man or flesh or sin nature cannot be made over or improved. It must be killed and reckoned dead. We have a new divine nature. Christ lives in us. The new man is Christ formed in the believer, as it says in 4.19, uh, Galatians 4.19. Okay. My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ is formed in you, Paul said to Galatians. Um, then turn to um, Colossians one twenty seven says um, go ahead, Patty, Colossians one twenty seven. Okay. Okay. 127. Yeah. Uh, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So then we have Christ in us. That's what, you know, the divine nature is. It's him mm -hmm. in us. Mm -hmm. We are dead to the law so that we might live unto Christ, as it says in Romans 6, 3 through 11 and 7, 4. And Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. A dead man cannot be condemned. Let's take a look at those verses. Turn to uh, Romans 6, 3. And then we just have two verses and we'll be done. Six, three. Romans 6, 3 through 11. And our homework. Oh, and we have to do our homework. Yeah. Um, Maureen, why don't you um, take um, Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. And Patty, why don't you take Romans 3, uh, uh, 7, 4, and I'll take Romans 6, 3 through 11. Okay. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So we, we died with him. Um, you know, and now we're walking in newness of life with him. For if we have been planted together with the likeness of his, in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing that this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, just like Christ died we died and we are reckoned that to be true because god says that about us uh patty seven four romans seven four um wherefore my brethren ye also are become dead to the law by the body of christ that we should be married to another even to him who is raised from the dead that we should bring forth fruit unto god okay so we're dead to the law Go ahead, and we're raised with Christ. Go ahead, Maureen, Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay, great. So, um... That's another instance of us um, 
you know, being dead and rising with Christ. And we're actually, God sees us sitting with Christ in the heavenly places. Verse 20, Patty, Galatians 2, 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, not yet, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Christ is the resurrection and the life, as it says in John eleven twenty five, And we have him in us, his divine nature. If we are saved, we can say, The life which I now live, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We are justified by our faith in his faith and live by his faith. Paul knew that Jesus Christ was in him and he lives in us too. Last verse, Maureen. And I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. To frustrate the grace of God is to build the middle wall of partition again to make a difference between the Jews and the Gentiles. Paul clearly said that the wall is down now, for he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make of himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you who were sometimes afar off, the Gentiles, and to them that are nigh, the Jews. For, though, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Ephesians 2, 14 through 18. There is no middle wall of partition today. God is not dealing with nations today, but with individuals. Individual Jews and Gentiles who believe the gospel of Christ, 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 3 and 4, become members of the body of Christ. Patty, can you read Galatians 3, 28? And receive eternal life. It's, this life is all about where we're going to spend eternity. Go ahead, Galatians 3, 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Good. So we're all one, um, whoever is a believer in the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. If we think we can be justified by keeping the law, then we frustrate the grace of God because we build the middle wall of partition again. Um, turn to um, Galatians 5.4. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever you are, justify, uh, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. So we don't want to fall from grace. We want to be found having his righteousness and not our own, as it says in Philippians 3, 9. Because if we could have received righteousness by keeping the law, Christ would have died for no reason. Peter... The Jews that were with Peter and Barnabas were pretending by their actions that they did not know about the great dispensational shift, the mystery that God had ushered in with Paul. But they did know. Yeah. Peter and the other Jews were putting up a fake front for the men who came from James. They denied the truth that God is forming the body of Christ in the dispensation of grace. So now Paul says, Oh foolish Galatians! Meaning that they are displaying the same dissimulation and denying the truth of the new Gentile opportunity to be saved by going, not going through Israel. Okay? Because notice here in your King James Bible mm -hmm. that there's no paragraph change um, when you get to 3.1. That means that Paul is, is continuing the same thought. So he's calling the Galatians foolish because they're 
doing the same pretense. They're putting up a fake front. They're denying the dispensational change, just like Peter and Barnabas were doing, and the, those Jews, see? Mm -hmm. So they were um, denying that truth of the Gentile opportunity to be saved during the dispensation of grace. Please notice um, that we can trust the king, the punctuation in the King James Bible, that you will not see a paragraph change until you get to three seven. You see there in three seven. See that little paragraph sign. Three seven. Look in, in oh, Galatians yeah. three seven. You uh -huh. see that little paragraph sign. Uh huh. Okay. So when we meet again next time, we will go over Galatians three, and we will see that Paul continues the same thought for the first six verses in Galatians 3. So let's uh, go to our homework. Okay, turn to page 195. Okay, um, justification by faith. Read Galatians 2.16. Let's do it together. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but uh, by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Jesus and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. We couldn't you know, be saved by keeping the law. So it's important to note that, the, that it is the faith of Christ that is emphasized as the thing that justifies us. Modern versions, unfortunately, change each reference to the faith of Christ into the faith in Christ. It is true that we must have faith in Christ in order to be saved. That's why the verse says, we have believed in Jesus Christ. But what happens when we believe in Christ? The verse continues with that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. Without the faith of Christ, his faith in the Father, Father to lead him to the cross to die for us and his faithfulness to save those who believe, our faith would be meaningless. His faith is a perfect, unwavering faith. Our faith is not. It is his faith that is imputed to us when we believe and that keeps us saved. Mm -hmm. The faith of Christ isn't only the power to save us, but the power to live for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Live by faith. Galatians 2, 20, 21. Okay, here's another fill-in situation. Let's mm -hmm. fill it in. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, by the faith, live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Good gir girls. <laughs> Thanks, team. Again, note that the faith of the Son of God that empowers us to live for God and to stand righteous before Him um, is emphasized in this verse. It is only His life in us that can produce anything that pleases God. Mm -hmm. uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Father God, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you that we have uh, trusted in Christ and we have his life in us and um, that your grace is sufficient to us because when we are weak, your grace is strong to us and um, we have Christ in us, Lord, his divine nature and um, it's what we do using his divine nature and empowered by him as a power source that blesses and pleases you. Thank you, Lord, for your word that helps us to know things so clearly. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.